Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this exciting event today. My name is Jackie Scott, and I have the pleasure of serving as the director for the Department of Community Resources and Services, the umbrella agency under which the Office of Aging and Independence resides, the home of our 50 plus centers. The, we could not have asked for a more beautiful day to have this gift happening for us. It has been a long time coming, but well worth the wait. It is so exciting to see so many of you here today. And we have some very special presentations and speakers with us today. So we will not delay in our program. It is a great honor for me to always introduce our fearless leader, uh, Dr. Calvin Ball, our county executive. Dr. Ball. Thank you so much, Jackie. And uh, just while I, I have you all here, I want to personally thank Jackie and her entire team who have been phenomenal and standing in the gap during this challenging time. Uh, DCRS is is the entity where many people who are most vulnerable and most in need start and Jackie and her team has been uh, fantastic. Uh, so please give her another big round of applause. Well thank you all so much for coming out. You know the biggest fear whenever you plan a party is that no one will show up. <laughs> so it's good, good to see you all and uh, I was uh, thanking Dr. Cochran for bringing the weather. So uh, thank you, Dr. Cochran. Uh, this is a beautiful day to do a beautiful thing, to celebrate this much anticipated East Columbia 50 plus center. Here in Howard County, about a third of our residents are 50 years of age and older. And this group, according to our 2020 census, continues to be one of the fastest growing population segments. Notably, about 40% of our older adults reside right here in East Columbia. In the 2015 master plan completed by our Department of Community Resources and Services, the East Columbia 50 plus center was identified as one of the top priority projects. The current center serves a diverse and vulnerable community that includes approximately 85% who are 60 years of age or older and 7% who are below the poverty level and 35% who live alone. Simply put, this project is a priority. In our fiscal year 2022 capital budget, we allocated $5.5 million to build the East Columbia 50 plus center. And thanks to Senator Guy Gazzoni and our partners in the state delegation who helped secure an additional $1 million, we're able to finally get this project underway. This combined funding will allow this project to be completed by July of 2023. And the planned expansion will take this center from approximately 3,800 square feet to over 29,000 square feet. I would also like to thank our Department of Public Works and our Department of Community Resources and Services who have worked tirelessly to implement the vision of this expansion, as well as Tonya Akins and our friends of the library who have been fantastic partners. Throughout the past year, as we got closer to this moment, I've thought a lot about what this center means to our community and how important it is for the namesake of this center to reflect those values and feelings. We want our residents to feel welcome here, to feel safe, and to connect with their community. We want our residents to know this will be an inclusive and welcoming gathering space. I knew almost immediately whose name should be on this building, but there were a few hurdles, as you can expect when trying to name a building after a modest man. 
When I approached the family with my intention, there was hesitation. And it didn't surprise me because great leaders do the job without asking for accolades. And this leader is also very humble. But I was determined, and those of you who know me, I'm often determined. And I wanted to remind our community of the impact this trailblazer has had on Howard County. Many current Howard County residents may not know the transformative impact this individual had on a place we all call home. But that does not lessen the ripple effect his brave choices had on generations of families. This person began leading the residents who were pushing for more modern schools and county services. Appointed to the school board in 1964, this parent was an outspoken advocate for total integration of the school system, the establishment of kindergartens, and a change to an elected school board. As the deciding vote on our Board of Education to desegregate our public schools, this visionary provided black students the opportunity to have a fair and robust education. During his time as county executive, it was his decision to propose an Office of Human Rights that emphasized to our residents that equity, diversity, and inclusion were our strengths. There were many people behind him pushing for change, including his wife, Joan, which enabled him to be the transformative public figure that he was in our county's history. As a groundbreaking chemist who was a pioneer in the study of free radicals while working for Johns Hopkins APL, this brilliant public servant has contributed so much to Howard County government over the years. His work on the school board, the county council, as executive, and our Howard Community College, the foundation he built has been a foundation upon which many of us have been able to serve. I know he never thought of himself as a politician, but as a community advocate, which is why we will be naming our newest center the Dr. Edward L. Cochran East Columbia 50 Plus Center. Thank you, Dr. Cochran, for encouraging public participation in our government and advocating for more equitable policies for our residents. It was an easy choice to name the place of a valued and trusted leader on this new center. The Dr. Edward L. Cochran East Columbia 50 Plus Center will truly be an extraordinary place for our residents to connect, learn, and continue to thrive for years to come. And finally, thank you to the advocates. Your persistence has paid off for all of our older adults. As we endeavor to become an age-friendly county, a place where all our residents can live their very best lives regardless of their age, this center is a giant leap of progress toward the very best Howard County for all. And this is because of everyone who was here. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ball. And now it is a great pleasure and a tremendous honor. And I'd like to ask you to join me in welcoming Dr. Edward L. Cochran to say a few words. Dr. Cochran. How am I going to follow Calvin's remarks. I, um, I'm not responsible for the weather.
I have had a great career here in Howard County, and what is very important to remember is the accomplishments that have happened here, the progress that's been made, have not been a, a result of any one person. It's because we're, as a community, and we've made a lot of changes, some of them in the first 10 years or so of our residents, my wife and family's residents, occurred in those first 10 years. The early accomplishments that Calvin mentioned a few are all the result of a lot of different people, communities working together. And I hope we can continue that and that this facility will facilitate it. And I thank you very, very much for this honor. And thank you all for coming. Good morning, everyone. You know, uh, Dr. Cochran, you thought it was tough to follow uh, Calvin. Um, but it's really tough uh, to follow uh, really a legend in our community, someone um, who has made uh, such a contribution over the course of, uh, of time um, that really hits to the, to the basics of who we are uh, as a community. And I can't tell you how grateful I am uh, for you and for your service. Uh, on behalf of, first off, on behalf of the, the delegation, uh, your delegation in Annapolis, uh, you know, we're really grateful that we were able to help contribute to this. And I, I see in particular uh, Delegate Watson, Courtney Watson, who you may know a little bit. Um, <laughs> And she's always a great advocate for the funding for the, for the county, as is the whole team. And it's great that we work as a team. The fact that we can do this uh, with the county executive and the administration and the council um, is a great thing. And it, and it comes back to some of the things that I know you fought for, uh, uh, Dr. Cochran. This, this idea of a quality of life, this coming together as a community, this what is it that is most important? And uh, I think uh, those questions are critical at all times in, in our society. We have to keep asking those questions over and over again. And at the end of the day, um, what's in our hearts and what we know is important and, and what is really important here and what we're honoring here today is the fact that at every phase of our lives, no matter who we are, we want to be engaged in the community. We want a quality of life. And I've never really, I've never believed that government served, uh, was able to solve every problem, but at least we ought to come together to create a framework for people to come, come and enjoy and learn and succeed in their lives. And, uh, and that framework is, is what this, this new building will be about. So I'm very grateful to everyone who's been engaged, the, uh, the citizens who've been working on this for years, the county executive, the whole team, um, this is really special. Uh, thank you all very much. It's always hard to follow Guy and Calvin because <laughs> there's a little bit of a height difference between us. <laughs> but good morning. I'm Christiana Rigby, and I'm honored to serve on the Howard County Council for District 3, where we're gathered here today. I'm so excited to join County Executive Ball, Dr. Cochran, Council Chair Jones, and members of the East Columbia community as we finally break ground on the new East Columbia 50 Plus Center. This center has been a long time coming. For many years, residents who use the current center have been limited to, it's about 38,000, I mean, sorry, 3,800 square feet, which is truly a glorified hallway with a couple rooms. And other centers have been renovated, expanded, and constructed elsewhere in the county. But our center here in East Columbia was inadequate to meet the needs of our community. Our older adult population in East Columbia and in Howard County is growing, which means our government services and facilities need to grow to meet the increased needs of our community members. This project will accomplish that goal by providing a new, accessible, 50-plus center in East Columbia that is over seven times larger 
than the current hallway. <laughs> Residents will be able to use this center for exercise programs, food access, social programming, health services, civic engagement, and so much more. This center will have a life-changing impact for older adults who call Howard County home. And this is exactly the type of investment that Howard County should be making on our road to recovery from COVID-19, investing in people and building community. This project is also a beautiful example of what we can accomplish when we come together with a common purpose around shared goals and values. Just uh, eight months, over 250 community members came out to this very location, many that I see today, to raise their voices in support of this project. And because of your advocacy, we got it done. Before I conclude this morning, I'd like to express my gratitude to County Executive Dr. Calvin Ball for his unwavering commitment to this project. It takes leadership to get big things done. Through much adversity and hard budget cycles, the county executive never gave up on this project and he never gave up on this community. I'd also like to recognize Jen Terrasa's hard work for carrying the ball. Uh, I didn't even mean that pun. But, but truly, she did through her years on the council working to get this project advanced um, and as well as our strong and committed advocacy of the East Columbia 50 plus steering committee, including Fran Lopresti, Nelson Pollock, Pearl Atkinson Stewart, Claire Femiano, Allison Korn, Henrietta Millard, our lovely, lovely Meredith, who we are all so grateful for, our Owen Brown Village Board representatives, who I also saw earlier somewhere back there. Um, as well as the leadership from PATH and Pastor Jones. It really did take a village. In fact, it took multiple villages, <laughs> and I did mean that pun, to get it done. Thank you all, and thank you to Dr. Cochran for your example of leadership throughout the years. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I just want to say two brief things. One, everything Council Member Christiana Rigby just said, she summed it up, so that. <laughs> And then the second thing I want to say is the advocacy for this project was so important and meant so much. To see emails from some of you, phone calls from some of you, invitations for Tai Chi from some of you, more emails from the same people, another round of emails from certain groups, and a few more emails. <laughs> now that's exactly how it starts though. If you look at this chart and you see the funding, this funding, yes, it came from certain entities with the county and the state. Thank you so much, Dr. Ball. Thank you so much, Senator Guzzoni, and the whole delegation and the votes from the county council. But the driving force behind it was your emails. The driving force behind it was the advocacy. The driving force behind it was you. Without that, we're sitting in a room or sitting on WebEx calls trying to figure out how to make things happen with data and statistics, and it doesn't feel the same. The, the heartfelt feeling from you is where it really counts. So we thank you so much. What a beautiful day. We're amongst beautiful company. Thank you, Dr. Cochran, for everything. I can't wait to visit this center with you. Thank you. Good morning. After that, uh, I think I owe her something, uh, you know, <laughs> dinner, lunch, whatever, uh, whatever she'd like. Well, good morning to you. This is a beautiful morning. You couldn't have a better morning to get this, to do this. And I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. And I want to welcome everybody. I want to welcome the Cochran family. I want to welcome my friend, the county executive. And uh, I just want to say thank you, all of you, for being here. And Dr. Cochran, 1964, I'd hate to tell you what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> so I won't embarrass either one of us. But sir, because of you, it's allowed someone like myself to be up here, to be able to speak, to be able to be in leadership positions, to, be, to go to schools that were fully integrated. It's because of you that I'm allowed to do this. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I come from a mixed family, and my, my daughter is, is mixed as well. It, it, you know, we, we have been rewarded because of the things that you've done. And from one man to another man, thank you very much, sir. I appreciate that very much.
as the county executive has said, you know, we want to welcome you to this to this uh, facility. And what a great name, huh? Dr. Cochran, I like that. You know, it's it's really truly something that's going to mean something. It's going to mean something to this community. It's going to mean something as it opens up. You know, I, I'm the chair of the Commission on Aging. And I've got one of my commissioners, uh, fellow commissioners back there, uh, Angie, just say hi, Angie. She's back there with as well. And I tell you what, um, we do, we strive very hard to, to do what it takes to represent our seniors because we are seniors ourselves and we want to make sure that, you know, that the needs of seniors are met and met throughout this county. And Dr. Ball, you've done that, you've been doing that constantly. His, his ear is always open. I can always go to him and talk to him about what, you know, what the needs of the senior community is. And he listens. That's an important thing. I really appreciate that. So as the, the pandemic seems to be winding down, and hopefully it will wind down soon, um, I'd like to make sure that everybody knows that you're welcome back to the, to the center. You know, it's time to come back. It's time to get in there. It's time to meet people again to shake hands, to hug. I haven't hugged somebody so long, I forgot what it's like. But it's time to hug again. It's time to, you know, to start those relationships again. It's time to connect as a, as a Howard County family. And that's what we'd like to do. So with that, I'm going to close my little speech and say that uh, I, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year's to everyone. And, I, and we know that as this center is fully constructed and fully uh, design that we will have a center that is going to be the best center in this country. So thank you, Dr. Ball. Thank you, Dr. Cochran. I appreciate it. And thank you again, sir. The first thing I want to do is to let you see who are the members of the 50 plus center. If I call your name, please stand. Claire Fimiana. <laughs> Allison Korn. Nelson Pollock, Fran Lopresti, and Henrietta Millward. This committee worked tirelessly to bring us to today. They demonstrated patience and persistence for over two years. Today, we celebrate the end of that journey and stand ready to celebrate the completion in 2023. This center will serve future generations and render needed services to the 50 plus community. I also want to recognize and thank Delegate Jen Teresa, who started this journey with me over 10 years ago, and she never gave up. I want to thank Guy Gazone and the delegation for their support as well. And I have to say how much I appreciate Director Joy Scott and Meredith McCaig and all of our staff who gave us so much support as we went down this journey. I thank each and every one of you who testified or sent letters, signed petitions, and attended our rally. I especially want to thank Olivia Buckley and all the members of the PATH organization who brought us over the top. Yeah. Our thanks go to County Executive Ball. Thank you for putting the funds in the budget. And thank you to all the council persons, Rigby, Jung, Jones, and Walsh, for voting to fund the center. Thank you. The architects have rendered a magnificent, environmentally safe building that will be a spectacular site and will provide an updated facility for the future. I am really happy to know that it will be named after Dr. Cochran. He certainly probably doesn't remember this, but I was an employee when you were county executive. That was, what, 40 years ago? <laughs> After waiting and advocating for this day for over 10 years, I thank God to witness shovels in the ground today. 
Okay, all the thanks I second, so that'll cut a lot of time from what I've got prepared. We're the little engine that could, and we did. Um, here's what we know, and that is that we serve uh, citizens from every zip code in Howard County and beyond. We are a regional destination for excellence. Anyone who's visited our two little schoolroom uh, center, and you're welcome for a 30 second tour when this is all over. That's all it'll take. Plus we have a cocoa bar. Um, you're welcome to join us, but our, our space challenges have been incredible. And so we have two little groups to thank, and that would be the Howard County Library, who has given us meeting space and exercise space, as well as Owen Brown Village Center. Thank you for letting us spill into your rooms, because we really needed it. As you can imagine, we cannot wait to serve all the groups and programs that currently clamor for space. Just don't want to cry. We have dreams. <laughs> mm. We have dreams that we hope to, we will continue. We have dreams that we hope will be continued to be guided by those who fought so hard for this day. East Columbia 50 plus, we are strong, we are resilient, our future is bright. Let's dig it. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Today is a glorious day. It is a day that has been uh, long fought for, hard fought for but it has come. I'm Pastor Tyrone P. Jones, the fourth pastor of the First Baptist Church of Guilford and co-chair of PATH, along with Reverend Mary Kay Canahan. This senior center has been a part of the general plan of, the Howard, of Howard County for many years now. The plan started and stalled, as you all know, many times. But thanks to the county council members that are represented here today, thanks to our county executive, Dr. Calvin Ball, and thanks to our lawmakers in Annapolis, through their due diligence and forthrightness, the Senior Center is going to be built. Let's give God praise for that. We have all done our part to move forward this long overdue project. Plain and simple, this project was always about equity for our seniors. More seniors of color use this senior center more than any other place in the entire county. Building the East Columbia Senior Center is about more than providing adequate space. This groundbreaking project today is about honoring those who have helped to build the fabric of our community. This is about providing support and needed care for our elders and sages who have lived in Howard County for many generations. Our seniors, elders, and sages deserve the East Columbia 50 plus center, named after Dr. Conkren. Amen. It has been my honor to serve with my disciple and member, Sister Pearl Atkins Stewart, who called me and said, Pastor, we gotta do something about this and the entire senior advocacy group, PATH, people acting together in Howard, will continue to stand with you, and we're honored to stand with you today. Today is a great day for a new beginning for our entire community in East Columbia. God bless and thank you. And uh, finally, I also would like to have a special thank you to Sharon Walsh, and her team in facilities, Adriana and others who rolled up their sleeves with us and made sure that this was gonna happen. Sharon, thank you so much. Thank <laughs> you. 